This is my ever faithful noodle rig. The reason it's called the noodle rig is named after me, Scott Noodle, after Pot Noodle. One thing that you might notice about this rig that's different than others is that real large shrink tube kicker and the shape of it. The reason I use that shrink tube kicker so long is because there's a real nice soft power just behind the bone, the jawbone in the fish's mouth. That's exactly where this rig hooks them every time. You know, that's the place that you want to be hooking a fish and I very rare, rarely touch wood, get hook pulls. The reason I use this rig is because I've used that a lot in the edges. I do a lot of watching the fish from, from the trees and I've never seen a fish chuck it out, you know, so that gives me massive confidence out in the pond. I've caught all my biggest and best fish on, on this rig and I generally use it over a clear spot. If there's any, ever any doubt in your mind that there's little bits of debris, any chard or leaves or anything on the spot, I'd be opting for a, like a hinge rig setup. But if it's real nice and clear, real glassy or real gravelly, this can go out there. This is the one for that sort of spot. The reason I use this as a blowback is because when the fish ejects the hook bait, it'll put weight down onto the hook point as it slides down the shank of the hook, as opposed to fixing it up on the shank like some people do that'll take weight off the hook point. This just gives me the best possible chance of pricking that bottom weight and getting a good firm hook hold. I always like to leave a, a good few mil between the rig ring and the hook bait. That's just so that it's got some give in the fish's mouth. Again, if, it, if the bait is too tight to the hook, as soon as it blows it out, it's gonna carry that hook with it. So you've gotta give it some free play. There's all these mechanics, all these components here are all working together and every one is just as vital as the other. Hook bait wise, I always fish a balanced bait. No, I'll never use a bottom bait, mainly because of the kick away. I know this rig will always reset no matter what. On the cast, if a bird picks it up, fish wash it around, because of the balanced bait, all working together with these putties, the semi-stiff material, always going to kick away. As opposed to a heavy bottom bait, it's going to drop straight down on that lead setup. One thing I will say about this rig, as I always use a dissolvable foam nugget, it is very tangle prone, so putting that foam nugget around the gape of the hook really protects it from tangling. Also, once it goes to the bottom, it'll sit up six inches and then kick away nicely. In terms of construction, it's very easy. I'll strip about three to four inches of material off, I'll make my hair, and then I'll overhand knot a rig ring on, usually about the size of, of your dumbbell with a few mil extra. I'll then move on to the knotless knot. It's usually between four and six turns. The reason I say between four and six is because I just want that uncoated material to just slip through the eye of the hook. That way I can grab the coated material, strip it back to just over 20 mil. That allows me to then put my shrink tube on, bend it around my thumb into this shape, and then all the bunched up material acts as like a little sinker just to mold my putty around so it won't move. At the other end, I'll slide my tungsten anti-tangle sleeve on, then I just do a standard four turn grinner knot straight to the swivel. I don't use any type of quick change or anything because I'm going to be using a fresh rig every time. If I catch a fish or I redo my rods at any point, I'm going to be putting a fresh rig out. I don't want to leave anything to chance, you know, I put all the effort into catching these fish and the last thing I want to do is I have a man-made error where I've put a, a, a blunt hook out or something like that, so I always use fresh rigs every time. 